Okay, let's take a look at a compound interest application question involving variable interest rates. A four-year investment has just matured at this amount, and we want to know how much money was initially invested given these variable compound interest rates over that four-year period. One of the first things we can do is draw a timeline to help us visualize the problem. Our investment has matured, so the end of our timeline is actually considered today. It was a four-year investment, so we're going to go back one, two, three, four years. In the first year, the investment earned 4.5% compounded semi-annually. So in year one, the investment was earning 4.5% compounded semi-annually. In year two, the investment was earning 4.75% compounded semi-annually. In year three, the investment was earning 5%, this time compounded monthly. And in year four, it was earning 5.1% compounded monthly. The initial investment would have been considered the present value of the investment four years ago. And its maturity value would be considered the future value of that investment four years ago. I know that might sound confusing. Why do we call future value something that's happening today in the present? But the investment began four years ago, so we have to start there with our present value. Okay, we know the relationship between future value and present value is given by this formula for compound interest. Now, our timeline starts with present value on the left and future value on the right. So let's rearrange this formula to fit our timeline. We can easily do that. Let's just move future value to the other side. It doesn't change the value of the equation. Now, because we have different interest rates per time interval, we'll write this formula as follows. Present value times 1 plus the periodic interest rate in time interval 1 to the number of compounding periods in time interval 1. Times 1 plus the periodic interest rate in time interval 2 to the number of compounding periods in time interval 2 times 1 plus the periodic interest rate in time interval 3 to the number of compounding periods in time interval 3, times 1 plus the periodic interest rate in time interval 4 to the number of compounding periods in time interval 4. That will equal the future value. Okay, let's now work out the periodic interest rates and the number of compounding periods for each time interval. For time interval 1, I1, would be 0 0.045, and it's compounded semi-annually, so we divide that by 2, and n would equal 2, two compounding periods in that interval. For time interval 2, i2 would equal 0 0.0475 divided by 2, because it's compounded semi-annually, n2 would also be 2. Let's just remove this equation here. We don't need it, just to create some extra space. For time interval 3, I3 would equal 0.05 divided by 12, because it's compounded monthly this time. N3 would equal 12, 12 compounding periods in that time interval. And for time interval 4, the periodic interest rate I4 would be 0.051. Again, it's compounded monthly, so divided by 12. And our number of compounding periods in that time interval would be 12. All right, let's substitute our values into our equation. So present value is what we're looking for. This would become 1 plus 0 0.0225 to the exponent 2 times 1 plus 0 0.0275 to the exponent 2 times 1 plus 0 0.00416. And that um, line above the 6 means it's repeating, and that is to the exponent 12 times 1 plus 0 0.00425, also to the exponent 12. And that's going to equal our maturity value up here, which is $26,178.21. And just note, when we divide 0 0.045 by 2, we end up with 0 0.0225. And that's the number that goes in here. And our 
uh, n1 is up here, etc. Now we just have the one variable, so we can go ahead and solve this, and we're following bed mass, so I've added these two numbers together inside the brackets for each one of these time intervals, and the next step is to take the exponent of each of these. And notice I'm keeping as many decimal digits as possible for now to increase the accuracy. Next, we go ahead and multiply all of these four numbers together. And when we do that, we end up with 1.21195, etc. Next, I want to isolate present value. Uh, so I'm going to divide both sides by this number right here. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other side. So on this side, these will cancel out. And the present value ends up being 21,600 decimal 00188. Now, because we're talking money, we round to two decimal digits right here. We look to the digit to the right. It's not five or bigger, so we're going to leave this here and round this number to $21,600 even. So how much did Bronco initially invest? He invested $21,600. And there you go. Hope that helped. Thanks for watching.